Welcome to Love, Laughter, and Limits. I'm Tom Dozier, and this lesson is Parental Expectations, Effective Parenting Skills for Young Adults, Part 2. We're going to cover the single skill, Parental Expectations, of how we teach and motivate our child. And it's critical that our young adult child know what we expect of him. Now, this has an influence on what he does now and also who he becomes. This is also uh, a useful skill for handling some of the pain in the butt behavior that we have to put up from these young adults. And this skill will allow you to be upbeat and respectful of your young adult child and avoid nagging and criticizing and complaining. I would like to acknowledge Dr. Latham uh, for, this, for the content of this class. Now, what do you expect your child to do or to not do? You know, this is can just very hugely across the board, from letting you know when he's going to be coming home, to making good grades and graduating in college, to put their dirty dishes in the dishwasher when they're done, uh, to put their shoes out of the way by the door, to take good care of themselves, meaning avoid high-risk behavior, which uh, would also uh, include, um, you know, dangers of drinking and driving, uh, sexual behavior, daredevil behavior, maybe to never harm themselves, to take good care of themselves, meaning to never harm their bodies, uh, which would relate to cutting and suicide. Uh, we, maybe we expect them to respect the family values by not bringing anything into the home that would be outside of our family values, such as bringing illegal drugs into our home, uh, keeping at least a half a tank of, ca of gas in their car, maybe it's a family car, but that they normally use. Uh, and for sure, we expect them to be actively gaining skills to become independent and self-sufficient or actually be paying their own way. So there's kind of four steps to parental expectations. This is kind of the simple version. As a parent, you want to tell your child what you expect of him. You want to have the child repeat it back. And then you want to wait for the child to meet or start meeting that expectation. And you want to acknowledge it in some positive way. Now, there's lots of details along the way, that, but this is the overview. What, tell them what you expect. Have them repeat it back. And then... Once they start meeting or have met it or start to meet it, then acknowledge it in some positive way. So suggestion number one is to use positive language to tell your child what you expect him to do rather than what you expect them to not do. And generally, especially with young adult children, you want to do this with respect. Uh, we we kind of have this co-worker relationship in many ways, depending on where your child is, between that just out of high school and just out of college and ready to move out, but using words like, I would appreciate you putting your shoes by the side of the entryway so they're out of the way. Uh, that general kind of respectful uh, discussion. But instead of saying things like, don't waste your time, don't play all those so, much, so many video games, you would expect your child to do all the schoolwork and to do it well. Instead of saying, don't leave your dirty dishes all over the house, you would want to ask him to please put your dirty dishes in the dishwasher when you're done. Instead of saying, don't speed, don't use drugs, don't have unprotected sex, you would want to say, expect you to take good care of yourself and your body. Now, you may have some qualifiers in the discussion as to whether you're talking about car driving behavior or sexual behavior or drug behavior, or just general daredevil, stupid college student behavior, but you want to have, have that discussion around the global topic of them taking good care of themselves and maybe avoiding high-risk behavior. Now, although that first positive statement may be, may be fairly general, you want to work down to the point where it's really clear as to what you expect of your child. Um, if you expect them to use alcohol responsibly, then that's what you want to tell them. And what does that mean? And make sure you work through that. If you expect them to 
avoid illegal drugs, then you want to make sure that you're clear about that too. So a third party, you know, that was hearing the conversation should understand what you expect by the end of the conversation. Uh, you want to minimize the number of words that you use. You want to keep it brief and you want to stay calm. And if it comes to the question of, well, why should I do that, mom or dad? You want to keep your explanations short, maybe one or two short statements. And if the kid goes on, but I think that's stupid and I disagree and that's ridiculous, then you avoid argument and debate. You can simply say, I know we see this differently, but what is it that I expect of you? We'll cover that a little bit more. And this one, because the step number three says to have the child restate the expectation. If at all possible, if the child is reasonably cooperative, if you, if you can get the child to talk about it and say, just to make sure we're clear, what is it that I'm asking of you? Just to make sure that there's no misunderstanding, what is it that I expect of you? And you're very likely going to get, but when I'm at college, you don't know where I am, so why should I tell you where I'm going here? Or let's just take that one. And so you want to respond to that feeling, right? You know, I, I know this seems maybe intrusive that I want to know where you are uh, when, when you're at home, coming and going, but as a member of this household, I expect that we're all going to tell each other of our comings and goings and where we are. It's just part of being a family. But that's stupid. You don't know where I am when I'm at college. Why should I tell you where I am when I'm at home? Once again, you listen to that, okay? We've got an annoyed child here. And you say, you know, I can see that this is annoying to you. I don't mean to be. But even so, as a member of this household living here, what is it that I expect you to do? And you're staying calm and to the point, and you're focusing on your expectation. You're not going off into a discussion of why it's different when he's home versus in college, how you can stand to not know where he is there, but you can't stand here, why you're paranoid and not trusting him. And you, know, you don't go into all those issues. You just want to have empathy and go right back to your expectation that when he's at home between semesters, you expect him to let you know when he's going, where he's going, and when he's going to be coming home. And then you want to emphasize the benefits that are earned by being compliant, by meeting this expectation, okay? You want to emphasize the benefits to the child, not to you. Not like, I'll, I'll sleep so much better, I'll be so much happier. No, no, we got to work on some benefit for the child. How does this benefit the child? And, you know, maybe it has to do with the fact if you're still paying funds for him to be in college, that you say, you know, this is, uh, this is just part of getting along as a family. And if you want to come and live here between semesters, which I want you to, then we need, I need your cooperation in this matter. And you wouldn't say that unless you were really willing to allow him to not come home during semesters. But that may be your, your expectation. Or maybe you're having, providing some financial support. It's your car, you're paying the insurance, you're paying a certain amount of, of funds toward things, and maybe that's part of what this is gonna earn. Maybe you're just gonna say, you know, I know this seems to be a pain in the pain to you, but I would really appreciate it if you'd just give this a try. That's enough, that's an earned benefit, your appreciation. Okay, next suggestion. Never tell a child something that he already knows. You want to have the child tell you. You wanna engage them in the conversation. Uh, maybe you start this conversation about telling you where they're coming and going and when they're gonna be home by saying, you know, I know that when you're off at college, you have a certain amount of, extra amount of independence and freedom that you really enjoy. How do you feel about that? 
well, I really like being away and I really like being on my own. And then you say, you know, I can understand that you would really like that. It's kind of different when we're in a family situation. And then you, you really want to get one or two sentences for you and then have some response back from the child. Otherwise, if it's just blah, 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 you're talking, he's going to go and his mind is gone. It won't matter what you're saying. He's not going to hear any of it anyway. So you want to let the child be part of the solution. So, you know, how can you let me know where you are, your plans, or, you know, maybe it's leaving you a note. Maybe if it's just sending you a text. Whatever it is, but help them be part, have them be part of the solution and help them tell you what they're expected to do or going to do or plan to do. And occasionally, it doesn't work this way much with older kids, depends on the age, but you may even do some role playing. So, okay, let's just pretend that we're in this situation and I'm going to be the waiter in the restaurant. You know, whatever problem it is that you've been dealing with with this guy or gal. And then one of the keys here is that once the expectation is understood, it's restated only by the child. You want to keep your mouth shut. Once he or she understands it, you want to let them tell you. So rather than saying it again, rather than saying, but I expect you to let me know where you are and when you're coming home. So you start to get frustrated. You just say, you know, I don't mean to be so irritating, but I really just want to make sure we're clear. What is it that I expect you to do? Well, it's stupid. Your child will say, well, it's stupid for me to have to tell you where I'm going and when I'm going to be home. And you may say, but that, thank you, that's exactly what I expect of you. And once again, you stop, keep, you don't want to keep beating the kid with the words of what you expect. Have them tell you. Because something goes on differently up here when they're processing it to get it to come out of their mouth. It's part of self-instruction. And the research shows that if a child or a person says it, then they're more likely to do it. And then you want to allow the consequences to teach. Right? You want to um, set it up in a way that you can live with what happens. If the child doesn't tell you of his coming and going, he's not going to get your appreciation for it, but that's all you've set up. Give it a shot. Sometimes you have to ask a couple of times in nice ways and a reminder of, well, you know, I'm sure something happened last night, but what was it that I expected of you regarding when you were going to be coming home? And they'd tell you again. Okay, so I want to role play this setting expectations. And I'm going to ask my helper Aaron to come out. And so Aaron is my son. He is getting ready to go off to college. And this is the first time. And I just want to make sure that he understands what I expect of him in terms of getting a good education and what that means. So, um, hey, Aaron, can we talk just a little bit about college this next semester when you're going to be going off to school? Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Okay, well, you know, I'm just uh, really proud of you working hard through high school and doing so well in your classes. And I just want to make sure you understood, understand what your some of the things your mom and I expect of you off at college. So... When you go off to college, we expect you to get a good education. So what would that mean to you? What does that mean to you to get a good education? Get a good education, get good grades in my class, and graduate from, from college. Okay, so that would be great. And in terms of getting good grades in college, how does things like attendance and homework and studying affect that? What would we expect you to do? to attend class, do my homework, and do well, and study for the tests. Right, and how many of your classes would we expect you to attend? All of them. All of them, yes, <laughs> that's right. I mean, you know, hey, you know what, sometimes at school or college, you may be tired, you may have, other, there may be temptations, and it's not quite the same environment as home. You're going to be on your own, it's going to be your responsibility, so I'm glad you know we expect you to go to all your classes and do all the schoolwork. And, you know, that's a lot of work. And so when it comes to getting an education, the primary purpose of this education is for you to be able to 
be independent and self-sufficient to get a job. So, um, and part of getting that ability is gain, getting a good education, meaning that you've really learned the, the subject matters of the classes. So, from my perspective, what's the overall purpose of going to college? To get a good education and to get a job afterwards. That's right. And when it comes to a person looking at you for an interview and talking with you, what do you think would be one a couple of the things that they would be able to see determining to determine how good of an employee or how talented you were? Um, they're going to want to see that I was that I got a good education, that I was responsible. Well, what does that look like to, on a transcript? It looks like good grades and that's right. Right, and, and that's one of the, unfortunately, I mean, that's not a full measure of what you've learned, but good grades is one of the few things that are, that's right in front of the employer who's going to be interviewing you for that first job. So, uh, anyway, we wish you well. We're glad you understand that we expect you to use this opportunity to get a good education and to get the skills you need in life. So, we wish you well, son. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Okay, and we go off, and it seems a little bit contrived possibly, but you know, this is real important. We talked about going to all the classes, right? Uh -huh. Doing all the homework, all the homework, studying, and really it's not just a social adventure going off to college. The purpose of this is to get a good education and be able to then move on and get a job. So, all right. Thank you very much, Aaron. Appreciate okay. your help. Okay. All right, folks, so you see how that works. Now I want to share experience from my own family regarding expectations and young adults. Uh, this happened with uh, a daughter of mine. Uh, she had uh, been doing very well in college. She had taken off a year and a half to go and serve a, a mission for, her, for the church. And she was back now, and it was summertime. We were kind of having one last big family va vacation. We were on a houseboat for a week, and um, Amy bought a, a fishing license, a temporary fishing license at the marina, and that was a key for dear old dad to take Amy fishing. So, you know, we got up early, and we went out and spent some daddy-daughter time together just wetting our hooks and our lines. We weren't catching anything, but we were just sitting around enjoying the time together. And I thought, you know, I'm going to I'm going to use this. I'm going to I'm going to take the time to talk about an expectation of her and graduating from the college. And I said, "You know, Amy, I'm just so proud of you for you've been doing so good in your schoolwork. You did a a really wonderful service for a year and a half. And I, I just really think that's, that's really great. And I just want to let you know, make sure you understand that when it comes to your college, I expect you to apply yourself and graduate. And her answer almost blew my socks off because we're a family who really have focused and believed in education. And she goes, you do? And I thought, oh, I thought it was so obvious. And she's graduated from college. She was married first. She had a few kids first. She was, uh, you know, but she, she kept going and she graduated from college. So, and I'm not sure that that one conversation was what did it. There was other times that we talked and that we just showed an interest in it. But it was clear <laughs> that she wasn't clear on my expectations until I said it. Now, if you look at this chart, the red line coming down is direct parental control. You have a lot of control when kids are babies and little young toddlers and preschoolers. And it drops off. The blue line is controlled through the natural consequences and you see it's coming up. And when at the onset of puberty those lines cross. Okay, your your adolescence is well beyond that and they've really not adolescent, your your young adult is well beyond that and they're really starting to learn about natural consequences. Now the green line shows safe parental expectations and I don't know exactly how much influence this has precisely, but letting your child know what you expect of them and tying it to some natural and logical consequences as I did in the role play with Aaron where I tied it to what is the real benefit of good grades 
and of graduating and getting a good education, that will tend to have a positive effect, a positive effect on your young adult. And so use these safe parental expectations to help your child understand what you expect of him. Well, I encourage you to clearly communicate your expectations to your child. It takes some time, takes some effort. You may get some pushback from your young adult, but make it happen. You know, you will likely be surprised at the positive effect that this has. You're not demanding, you're not insisting, you're not threatening, you're just stating an expectation, you're asking politely in a nice, reasonable way where you're getting it very clear on a positive language. And by the way, that positive versus negative language is important. That positive language of what you expect your child to do. Now, based on the re parent-child relationship there, based on the payoffs, the earned reward, which could have to do with uh, as we talked about in the Motivation for College, or if you haven't seen that, watch that. But in the Motivation for College, part of the earned reward was a lot of money. It came up to be about $900 a month, almost 1000 a month, for doing their schoolwork. And it's really important for the long-term development, especially for the, the younger young adults, those in their late teens, to understand what you expect of them. And it's a way of clearly communicating your values in a safe way. So thank you for watching Parental Expectations, Effective Parenting Skills for Young Adults, Part 2. I'm Tom Dozier, wishing you an abundance of love and laughter in your family, along with limits which our young adults still need to help them make the often difficult transition from dependent child to independent adult. Thank you.